the performance and handling on this bike is actually very good. Uh, the frame is very rigid and the vibration levels are very low. It handles beautifully, even though it is a, a long wheelbase, it's over 60 inch wheelbase, it falls into corners and picks right out. It, it comes right out. There, it, it's not heavy at all in turning. It has great gobs of ground clearance and the acceleration is incredible. So uh, it's, it's a very well, good performing motorcycle and uh, it pulls very strong and it has lots of torque. With the torque that it has, it's just, it goes like gangbusters. Hi, my name is Larry Romstant, uh, Romstant Engineering and Design. This is our Special K Series. And this, this bike is actually called the K Augusta. We call it the K Augusta primarily because it emulates uh, the MV Augusta and uh, with the fuel tank the way it's shaped and the four and a four Manu style exhaust. Uh, but it also has other Italian influences like the, the Ducati uh, 750-900 SS tailpiece, uh, the seat section. Uh, and it's an actual 900 Ducati 900 SS taillight. This is our homage to the to those uh, bikes of the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, and, the, and the main reason I built this is because this engine was not there at that time. There was no K model motor at that time. It was just a concept in some in a German engineer's mind. So they never had the opportunity to be part of that cafe revolution of the late 60s, early 70s. And I thought, you know, it. It deserves to be there, so I built this. These instruments, uh, I designed these because I love that the the jeweled, the jeweled light look of the the like the Guzis from the 70s because I had a Eldorado and it had the jeweled lights on the, and I also like the Smith style gauges with the, with the black pods. So I made these black pods. This is all handmade. Uh, this assembly actually just has a carrier underneath here, and all you do is take two screws out and it just slides into a socket. And that's how it goes in and out, very simple. Uh, it has a digital indicator display, and that circuit's in the, in the head, headlight. So that's the, that's the gauge setup that I have. The speedometer is driven by a GPS sensor. There's no, there's no cable, and it's a digital tachometer. The handlebar, the idea of, of this handlebar was so that I could use reverse levers and get a lay-down position without going to clip-ons, which would be a little bit too lay-down. You want to be able to be comfortable on the, on the freeway with it, and you are. I mean, you can cruise on the slab with this very comfortably. These are true R90S uh, clamps. Uh, they're unobtainable anymore, and they're the original thing, and I've always loved those. I had an R90S, and they're unique, so I put a pair of those on there. The tank emulates the MV Augusta America, a 74 MV Augusta America. Um, I loved, I've always loved the style of the tank. I just felt it was a little boxy on the backside, and it's a little wide. So I narrowed it down a little bit, but uh, maintained the basic look of the tank. And uh, I've always loved it, so that's why I did that. And it has the Monza cap, tiny little cap, because the fuel pump is mounted on the bottom of the tank on a plate. And it's a full-size uh, electric fuel pump. So you can take it off and with four bolts from the bottom. And that way I could put the small, small tank, the cap on the top there, which was important to me because the K-Bike tank cap is huge so you can get your hand in there to pull the pump out so I didn't want to have that and it has a true uh, BMW slash 5 series steering dampener modified to work on this bike uh, it works as well as it does for the slash 5 which was just good enough to hold the wheel straight when you're trying to take the wheel off it, on the stand it's not really good for much of anything else but it it works the way it's supposed to work the 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 switch gear is all slash 2 slash 5 series switch gear I uh, took off the purchase Cut them off and smooth off, smooth these off so that they would be, they would blend into the handlebar real clean. Nice smooth flow, and it's a twin pull, twin pull throttle. Although I only really need to use one, one side. I don't have a, I don't have a push pull on the bike. It's just a standard pull throttle. And uh, these switches work. This, this is the kill. This will do the kill on either side, and start. This, this side simply does high low beam in the horn. So it has basic functionality. I don't have turn signals on here right now. Intentionally, I did that. I will be adding some small LED turn signals, and then I'm going to go with the external CEV chrome switch that was on the bikes in the 70s. It'll go right there in the handlebar. I think that'll be clean enough. The seat is uh, styled after the Ducati, um, and that's basically what, it, what I wanted to do. I wanted to have that loop. I always loved the way the loop was on those, on those bikes where you could see the loop in the back. 
and it just had I just had to do it that way. And so, because K bikes are typically because they're longer wheelbase by nature, uh, it was it was a trick just to get the right length. But I think I managed to get good proportion on it. It's that's not faux uh, suede. That's the real thing, and um, that's it. And the, all the electrics are underneath here. Everything's under here. The brake mechanism's underneath the tank, and the the the, the uh, fenders are both hand formed. These these mud guards are hand formed, and this is from a this is a stock OEM 900 tail uh, tail light, and the tail light frame is from I believe a 60s Guzzi. A lot of bikes use these in the 60s. Here's the here's the brake mechanism. What it does is it converts cable to hydraulic back to cable. So you get the mechanical advantage of a hydraulic uh, a master cylinder. And you, you're able to pull in those big four leading shoe drums with these large cables much easier than you would with a, with a standard uh, uh, dual, dual uh, cable lever. So the mechanical effort and the advantage is very high. So you see you have a master cylinder. This, this is for the clutch because it does have a hydraulic clutch. So you have the hydraulic clutch cylinder. And then here's the uh, master cylinder for the brake. And then there's a slave cylinder in here and that pulls the two brake cables. Everything is back here, the battery, the start circuit, fuse box, relays, Motronic, and the, and the speed sensor. Uh, I, I conveniently put it all in the tail because it just uh, it was easier that way. I have plenty of room under the tank, but I didn't want to do that. And uh, so it's all back here. Yeah, the uh, front brake is from a GT750 slash GT550 Suzuki. I had a buddy with a water buffalo back in the 70s and and uh, he had that drum brake and I liked it so I always remembered it and I thought you know it looked good on a bike like this it's not large enough for a bike like this necessarily that, and that's why I designed the hydraulics to uh, to give it a little more strength I've opened it up to get it a little more air in there I've also enlarged the diameter of the push rods so there's absolutely no flexure on those so they're not there's no elastic deformation on any component at all this is a K75S fork. Typically, the, this model fork is the only fork that has the tunable uh, 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 valving. So this is valve for rebounding compression in both legs rather than just typically in one leg. And instead of shortening it internally, I actually shortened the, the tubes, these tubes by two inches. So they're still flush at the top. They have a new circlip groove and they're, they're, they're put in the normal manner. They're just exactly two inches shorter. That's what gives it the stance. This is a hand-formed aluminum uh, mudguard, and these are hand-formed aluminum brackets. This emulates that style of the period with the exposed brackets. Um, I put on this uh, Tarazzi fork brace. It's just like a Telefix of the period, and uh, it's a beautiful fork brace, and you really do need it, and it makes a big difference. So the front end is pretty stiff. The engine is a K1200 RS, it's a 2004 model. I typically put motors in that are sub 20,000 mile motors, so they're still in a break-in point. That way the motors are very as new as they're going to be. It's completely, it's fuel injected, it uses Motronic 2.2. It has inch and three quarter intake runners with standard K1200 RS uh, throttle bodies. The engine is not only water cooled, but it does have an oil cooler. and. Um, the uh, calculated horsepower right now is 145. The, the fact that the motorcycle weighs 529 pounds, the power to weight ratio is such that uh, it's like uh, 0.27 pounds per horsepower. Yeah, the transmission is a six speed K1200 Getra, it's a Getrog six speed from a K1200 RS. Uh, the triangulation of the frame has been modified so that it will carry a six speed. This is a, this is a K1100 LT frame from here from, the, from to, this, to this point, everything past this is custom because the standard motorcycle carries a five-speed gearbox that is bolted to the frame right here where the lugs would be. And that would create the engine as a stress member of the frame. In this instance, I've taken that away and I've stressed them. So the engine is stressed at three points. And the engine doesn't have quite the stressed member relationship to the frame as it did. And it's also viscous mounted, rubber mounted. And, there's, and typically on the K model, it was mounted with five points. It would be the, two, the four points here and then one at the alternator at the intermediate flange. The K1200 didn't mount at the intermediate flange. 
and I had to use that to get the 60 amp alternator so it only mounts in those points. Uh, that was the reason for the, for the lateral control arms. That was to help stiffen the backbone, uh, but it has a better, it has a more primary function, which is what I call uh, harmonic distribution. Uh, th that means that this rod at certain harmonic frequencies will absorb the vibration from the frame. And so this motorcycle, it, from, it has a buzz zone from about 20, 2,000 to 2,500 RPM. Uh, it's not uncomfortable. You can feel it in the bar. You can feel it in your pegs, but it's, it's, it's much less than you would expect. But above that, that vibration transfers into these two control arms, and it just goes away. So the bike becomes absolutely still above uh, 3,000 RPM. It's just amazing. It, it, you get it out in the freeway, 75, 80 miles an hour. It's like you're gliding on air. There's just no vibration. But if you put your hand down, you won't hear this, but if you put your hand down, this is, this is buzzing like crazy. And uh, it works beautifully. That was the whole idea behind it. Because the fact that they, it can't really work as much as a stress member as I'd like it to because they're cantilevered. They have to be cantilevered, which means they're not attached directly to the frame. They're on posts offset from the frame. That cantilever uh, will create some, some, uh, some uh, uh, flex, but still... Uh, it's enough. The, the, with the triangulation, with the additional structural uh, uh, addition, with the, the additional structural members on the frame here, it's very rigid, very very rigid. This is from the Thruxton. Uh, uh, this is from the from the Thruxton model, a British bike. It was just it was an element I always loved because it, it, it's a preload adjuster. If you stand it up, it gets softer. I mean, if you stand it up, it gets stiffer. If you lay it down, it gets softer. And that's how you would adjust the preload on those bikes. Uh, in this case, this, these are triple rate springs. They have full rebound compression and preload dampening. They're custom made for this motorcycle by Works Performance. And this isn't necessary as a component. It's, in, it's an aesthetic component. It does still function. I mean, if you raise it and lower it, it'll, it'll do the same thing. But you can do that here as well and through the uh, adjuster on the shock. Uh, the swing arm is from an R80 RT. It's been widened by two inches to accommodate the width of this rear wheel and to allow me to use the standard spacing on the frame for the swing arm. Uh, and also to get, in order to get that to work, I had to make this hub from scratch, primarily because nothing was wide enough. Uh, the stock hub, the stock uh, uh, R80 hub was half the width, so I had to make this from scratch. And it does carry a uh, an uh, inch and a quarter wide uh, uh, cast iron ring, a drum, uh, drum, uh, drum ring in it. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, pressed in and then it's pinned for security. Uh, this, this has a double row angular contact bearing on this side and a single row on this side. The double row is because of the axial force that's on the side of the drive, drive line. Uh, it works absolutely beautifully. I've got 2,000 miles on this hub, and there's no sign of wear anywhere internally. There, it, the, the bearings are, are spaced. There's a, there's a precision spacer in the middle of the hub so that when you tighten the axle, it puts preload on them to the exact amount, and it, it works perfectly. There's no issues with it at all. So that's basically how I built the, the, frame, the frame itself. Also, when you see the hangers that I'm using for the exhaust, uh, typically, they would, these would be strapped, but I couldn't do that. It just to me that looks like a it looks like a moped. I couldn't put a strap on here, so I put these large, large, uh, thick plates, and then uh, the the, the uh, exhaust as well as bolted to it. And as you can see, it's not going anywhere. The whole bike will move with it. It it'll 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 flex, but it's not. It can't do anything else to it. It's just absolutely rigid. The whole bike will shake. The exhaust, this is hand-formed. This was hand-formed by Larry Swan in England. And uh, I mean hand-formed. I mean, he just he took, a, took a piece of flat material, cut it to the shape of a cone, ro hand-rolled it around an anvil, seam-welded it, pu pl plugged the bottom, filled it with sand, plugged the top, heated it up, and hand-formed it. All four pipes. That's how he did it. The, uh, the pipes are unequal length. The headers are unequal length because they have to go underneath the frame and cross the other side. So the balancing is done with restrictor, restrictors in the, in the pipes themselves. 
to help uh, balance the balance the flow. The if you take the tips out, there are removable perforated baffles, and right now they're open. The baffles are in there, but the pipes are open. But you can you can ko wool this. You can pack it. You can stuff it. Anything you want to do, change the back pressure. So they're fully adjustable, and they're 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 just they're made of mild steel and they're in their uh, ceramic coated. The uh, this is a sleeving. This is a high temperature protective sleeving. Just slides right over it versus a wrap. I, to me, I like it. It's a little cleaner. So and it's and it works pretty well. It's it's expansive sleeve. So you slide it over and it just expands to the size. You can see that it it expands a little bit sometimes, but it's fine. And uh, that's how that that's how the exhaust is formed.